Morning guys, I'm Siobhan, a third year medical resident. Right now, I'm heading to the hospital to start a 26 hour call shift in the ICU. So we're gonna be dealing with the most critically ill patients in the hospital, and I'm gonna be telling you all about it. Each morning in the ICU, we meet in the conference room and then meet with the doctor who was on call to find out what happened overnight. Then we gather as a team to see each patient together. We stand with our portable computers and desks discussing every aspect of patient care. Today, our team includes the bedside nurse, pharmacist, dietitian, respiratory therapist, four residents, and the attending physician. These are the sickest patients in the hospital. Often they're hooked up to life support with breathing tubes, which is why we spend so much time with each patient. These discussions on rounds are fascinating, but to be honest, it takes a long time and it can become pretty exhausting and even a little bit painful standing for so many hours. Okay, so it's 2 p.m. and we just, just finished rounds. Like, this was seeing 14 patients over like five hours. We're all exhausted. I'm so hungry. I really wish I'd eaten breakfast this morning, so now I definitely need to get lunch because I'm starving. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so the rest of the afternoon has been pretty relaxed actually. We had some teaching, we went over some new big trials that have come out in the ICU literature. Um, we finished up our notes, chatted as a team, so nothing major. Uh, but now it's eight o'clock and guess what? We go on rounds again, which means that we're gonna go walk around, see all the patients again, and see what's happened throughout the day. Have there been any changes? These are some of the sickest patients in the entire hospital. So things change quickly, which is why we actually see patients frequently many times per day. Evening rounds are a lot faster. We're mostly following up on tests that have been done during the day, ordering blood work for the morning, and then trying to anticipate any issues that might arise overnight and trying to deal with them early. Now we're done with that, so it's time to find the ICU call room. And we've got anything that we might need. A fan, computer, flashlight for emergencies, Saudi Journal of Medicine, 2017, very up to date. And um, of course the bed, which I really hope gets used tonight. <laughs> hey, this is Siobhan from ICU, returning a page. Hi, Mary. And how much oxygen right now? Listen, I'll, I'll come up and meet you. We'll see the patient together and then figure out what to do. So I was just paged by one of the uh, CCRT nurses, that's a critical care response team. So these are very highly trained ICU nurses who respond to patients who are sick up on the ward. And the idea is that they can identify who probably needs to come down to the ICU early so that they can get uh, the care quickly um, and then hopefully be getting better. Um, so I've been called because there's a patient who is very hypoxic meaning they're not getting enough oxygen. Uh, I'm going up to see them right now in the ICU. I'm always worried if um, someone isn't getting good oxygen in, do we need to put a tube down their throat? Do we need to intubate them? We're gonna find out. Walking into the room, I can see the patient is receiving high flow oxygen and she's clearly feeling short of breath. Her heart rate is a bit elevated at 120 beats per minute, but luckily her blood pressure is normal. I'm ordering a stat chest x-ray and blood work now. I'm also going to see if one of the nurses can put in another IV so that we can easily give medications today. So this patient is really not doing well. <sighs> They're on 100% oxygen, so we can't give any extra oxygen. She's using all of it at this point. Um, and the x-ray looks like there's a collapsed lung. So you can imagine she's not even able to get very much air in. 
Um, so at this point, we definitely need to bring her down to the ICU, and I'm going to call my staff physician at home as well as the ICU fellow on call um, to be able to consider the next options, which may be something called bronchoscopy. So actually taking a camera, going down into the lungs, not me, like that is not, that's not something that I'm uh, qualified to do, but I will watch attentively and then trying to figure out what's blocking that lung. By the time the patient was transferred down to the ICU, the staff intensivist had already come in from home. We prepared some of the sedating medications for the procedure and then got started with the bronchoscopy. So putting the camera into the trachea and then down into the lungs, we were able to see that there was a lot of thick white mucus and that had plugged up her lung. So we were able to suction it back and then help her breathe a lot better. This is likely related to infection, probably a pneumonia, so we're starting up antibiotics and then watching her really closely overnight. It's so funny in medicine, people always say like, oh, is the patient sick? And you think, ah, they're in the hospital, aren't all patients sick? But this idea, there's this idea of like sick or not sick that you kind of develop in medical school, that is so incredibly important. And I'm, I'm sure I'm still figuring, ah, page. Okay, let's see what this is. Hi, this is Siobhan from ICU, returning the page. Oh yeah, I did hear he was coming. I just didn't know what time the OR was gonna finish. Great. Yeah, I'll be right there, okay. So this is the patient who's just coming out of the operating room and they need to come to the ICU here to be monitored overnight. Uh, so the anesthesiologists and the surgeons um, should be just rolling in now with the patient. So I'll meet them at, their, at the room and be able to get all the details from the surgery. I'm greeted by the general surgeon who explains that they repaired a bowel perforation in the operating room. The OR apparently went smoothly and there was really minimal blood loss. I then chat with the anesthesiologist who warns me that the patient has a difficult airway, meaning it's really difficult to intubate them because of his anatomy. So that's definitely something that I'm going to be passing on to the morning team. For now, I'm going to continue his IV fluids, antibiotics, give him some pain medications, and then overnight we'll be watching for any bleeding and make sure that his urine output is good. I don't think I realized how incredibly thirsty I am until I actually started drinking water on call. My kidneys will thank me. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, I'm actually so tired at this point. And I'm so convinced that the page is gonna go off. I'm like dreading it. So, okay, positive thoughts. I'm gonna try to get a little bit of sleep and hopefully I won't be seeing you guys until the morning. <sighs> okay. Um, so I just got paged about a patient who's in the, uh, in the ICU, in the emergency department who apparently needs to come to the ICU. Sounds like um, they are in septic shock right now, um, which is, really dangerous so I'm gonna go and see them right now. This patient came to the emergency department feeling generally weak. The eMERGE doctors found his blood pressure was dangerously low. He had a high white blood cell count and a fever. So first thing is to try giving IV fluids to bring up that blood pressure. And the emergency physicians did that. They gave him almost three liters of IV fluids but his blood pressure is still low. That's why they called the ICU. So at this point, we're going to start a new medication called Levifed, uh, which will help to bring up his blood pressure by causing constriction of the blood vessels. Okay. Um, it's now 7.30, so I'm going to get up and look at morning blood work before the team gets here and print out some lists. But uh, when my alarm went off, I had no idea where I was. So much more different than a, a pager going off. I was so confused. Uh. It feels so good to be home. Can't wait to get into my pajamas, curl up in bed, sleep for as long as I can without an alarm and no pager. Oh. 
Anyway, if you guys find that the ICU is exciting or you have more questions about it, I actually have a whole playlist for the past two years when I've done ICU rotations. So take a look at that and then leave comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. And otherwise, I'll be chatting with you in the next video. So, bye for now.